Hey everyone, welcome back to the other side of weight loss. Well, we're not too sure what we're talking about today, me and my guests, but we're pretty excited to have this conversation. My guest today is Patty Alfonso. She is a master facilitator, renowned coach, best-selling author, and founder of the Pole Dancing for consciousness. Patty is a sought after motivational speaker, writer, and teacher who has notably changed the lives of thousands. She is the author of the number one best selling books, Your Body as the Creation of Consciousness and Dancing as the Body of Consciousness. Patty hosts the TV show Orgasmic Living, where she helps listeners unlock the innate wisdom in their bodies so they can live orgasmically. So, welcome, Patty. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to see where we go today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I know. There's so many different things actually that I want to talk to you about. So I'm going to try and narrow it down. But first of all, I was reading over your site and I, and I like kind of how you put, you were on the road to self-destruction back in the day yeah. and <laughs> kind of took a complete turn and got yourself into probably a field of practice that you had no clue that this is where you would end up. So can we just kind of go back and tell us how you got to doing what it is that you do today? Sure. Um, you know, it's funny. Yes, I was on the, a very fun <laughs> road to self-destruction. Yes, mine was Thank also, it was very fun. <laughs> Thank goodness, you know, I took a turn. Um, but it's funny because I came into this world always with a desire to empower people and facilitate consciousness and help people. And so I thought that, like when people would ask me when I was younger, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say, I want to be a combination of Marilyn Monroe and Mother Teresa. And people would be like, oh, Okay, sure, sure, honey, whatever. Um, so I clearly uh, started off my journey trying to, you know, do the Marilyn Monroe thing. And, um, you know, I was an actor and I got involved in a lot of really crazy things in my youth. And, but that desire to help people was always there. And I always thought that if I like got really famous or something like that, that that more people would listen to me. So I always had that sense of creating global change. It was just something that I was innately born with. And after my um, road to self-destruction, <laughs> my road to sabotage came to an end. Uh, I ended up, you know, really tapping into that sort of Mother Teresa part of myself that wants to really help people. And now it's come full circle to, you know, pole dancing for consciousness and living orgasmic. I think that that's a really good combo right there. <laughs> this is Mother Teresa and Marilyn Monroe. They, they've come together on this. Yes, yes, I think I've actually accomplished part of what I came here to this world to be. Um, so I ended up in energy healing school. Uh, mm. My... I, I began my own personal energy work and really getting my life back together and back on track. I had, I had had a sense that if I kept going down that road, that I wasn't, I was going to die and I wasn't going to create what I came here to create. So the message was very loud and clear that I had to change some things. And so I began my own personal work uh, with energy healing and energy work. So I, I dove right into the holistic aspect of um, healing. And in energy healing school, uh, our teachers, as part of our self-care daily routine, the, the expectation was that we would add a movement to our everyday practice. And being who I am, I did not find yoga or Qigong or right. anything like that. I found pole dancing. <laughs> Which was actually really perfect because I had a sense that there was an energy that I wasn't allowing my body to have, um, that there was something missing that I wasn't allowing myself to be. And I didn't really know what it was, but when I found S Factor in Los Angeles, which was the pole dancing studio where I began that part of my journey, I was like, that, that's what I've been missing. Wow. And you know, I, I suffered, created a lot of abuse when I, you know, before I began my road to self-destruction, uh, 
sexual abuse, physical abuse, mental, emotional, spiritual, financial. I mean, I just, it was all present in my life. And so I was pretty much living, you know, from the head up, just completely disconnected with my body Mm -hmm. and completely disconnected to any kind of sexual energy that is naturally and innately available with our bodies. And so that's what the pole dancing started to unlock for me. And then take 10 years later, here I am. (laughs) I actually wondered reading over a lot of your stuff, I I kept thinking to myself, has this woman had sexual abuse? Because a lot of the time when we go into the field of work of healing, especially sexual healing, Mm -hmm. it's, it comes from that, the, the, the need to sexually heal. Right. I remember when you were just saying about the energy part there, I remember seeing that when I was going through my own healing after my (laughs) self-destruction road, I wrote to self-destruction, but I remember this energy healer woman was working on me and she said, you're, you've completely cut off your energy from the waist down. Mm-hmm. And she said, there's nothing like there. I was like, yeah. yep, had to do that. Right. Yeah. So can you explain the, the energy that, w- that you feel like you got? Can, can you explain that, that you get from pole dancing? Is it a sexual energy? Was it, you know? It's, it's a different way of awakening your body and being fully present with your entire body. Now, this isn't us living from the head up or not having a lot of energy in the bottom part of our body isn't always a result of sexual trauma. You Mm -hmm. know, I think it's just the way that we're conditioned where our minds are more important. Being smart is more important. Like the body, the body isn't necessarily valued in this world right now. It's sort of treated as this thing that, you know, carries your spirit or your being around that you kind of have to deal with, you know, and maintenance. (laughs) So um, the energetics part of it is our being, right? It has to occupy the entirety of our body. And sometimes, you know, especially if you're someone who thinks a lot, someone who's had trauma, you, you tend to sort of function a little bit up here, uh, out of the body. And so there's a lot of different reasons why that would occur. But um, how often, I, I, have to tell, I have to tell you a story. So the other day, it's going to be a little personal. Yeah. The other day I was walking and, you know, it's, um, you know, we're almost done with winter here or we have been, and I was wearing like uh, workout shorts and I was walking and I hadn't shaved in a long time. And I felt this, like, like I had a hair on my leg, you know, like when you kind of a hair and it gets on yes. your leg and it's like tickling you. And I kept looking at my leg and I was like, what, what's that? You know, but there was this little tickle. And what I realized was that I hadn't shaved in so long. (laughs) It was your leg hair, wasn't it? Yeah. My leg hair was long. And as I was walking, the breeze was tickling my leg hairs and I could feel them on my legs, just tickling. And I, it was the most interesting sensation. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'm fully present with the entirety of my body. If I can feel the the fine legs on my fine hair on my legs just gently caressing my skin, wow. And I was actually quite proud of myself. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about is about allowing you as a being to fully embody every area of your body. Every area of your body, not just from the head up or from the waist up you know, um, and you can see in, in people's bodies when they're not fully embodied because the body grows disproportionately in different areas where there's a lot more energy. Uh, the, the communion, right? The relationship that's available with your body when you're fully present in your whole body is, is miraculous. Yeah. (laughs) Your question. (laughs) I don't know, but it was good. (laughs) Yeah, it makes it makes me think of all the women that listen to this podcast, and a lot of them are, of course, suffering with 
with weight loss, like being able to lose weight. And I've been there and a lot of women are also suffering with some sort of health problem. And it's so hard when you're in either of those states or both to mm -hmm. love your body because mm -hmm. you feel like it's defying you that it's, and you don't like it. You're angry with your body. So what can these, what, what can, what advice do you have to, to someone that is in that state that just can't even imagine looking at themselves and being like, yeah, okay, sure. I love you. you know? Right. And you know what? Yes. And that is exactly um, what I have found with the women that I work with closely is that that's very thing that you're talking about. You know, they're not happy with their body but yet they're constantly told that they should be happy with their body and that they should love their body and that they should no matter, you know, there's this really interesting energy that gets created that you just named so beautifully. And that is, I'm supposed to love my body, but I don't love my body. So then I go into judgment because I don't love my body, but I should. And that's a whole different, that's, that's just crazy talk right there. And what I have found in, in my work is that we got to flip that. We have to flip it. What if it wasn't about loving your body? What if it was about finding out what your body loves? Mm -hmm. What does your body love? Let's pretend. Say that you have a best friend. And this, this friend uh, is constantly telling you what to do. Never asks you what it is that you would like. This friend tells you what to eat, tells you where to go, tells you what to wear, tells you who you're gonna have sex with, tells you how you wanna move, you know, we're gonna work out here three times a day, show up, be there. No questions, no, no, like, what would you like to do, right? I don't know about you, but I would not be friends with that person. No, very long. <laughs> no I would not <laughs> that be. like a terrible mm -hmm. one-sided relationship. And this is how we are with our bodies. You should eat so this, true. you're gonna go work out, we're gonna wear this today. So hold that sort of in your, in your vision for a minute. I'm gonna switch sides and go to something else. So one of the most, and then I'll put them together, one of the most generative energies that are available for your body is the, ener the orgasmic energy, right? Now we've defined orgasm as this one thing that we try to get to while we're having sex. I got to get to that orgasm 10 seconds and then we're done. Right? So that's yes. how we've defined orgasm. So notice these, these are how this reality, this world as it is right now is defining how you should be with your body and what orgasm is. Now, what if we put those together and instead of defining how you should be with your body, if you found out what your body loves and you do that by asking your body questions asking your body questions just like you would a best friend mm -hmm. so what would you like to, to do today body what would you like to wear today what would you like to eat today how would you like to move body would it be fun to have sex with that person would that be fun for you <laughs> <laughs> so you start asking your body questions and the thing is that our bodies have this innate brilliance and wisdom. Our bodies actually function from total consciousness. So why not invite the consciousness that is already available with your body into everything that has to do with your body? So you ask your body questions. And then the next thing is you gotta listen. Listen to, to the way that your body communicates with you. Just like you would be building a relationship with a new person. How does this person communicate? Our bodies communicate through mostly sensations. And sometimes you just have like a sense, an awareness, a perception of something. And this is where the orgasmic energy is going to come in. Where we are actually going to invite the energy of orgasm into every moment of our lives with our bodies. So you ask your body, what would you like to eat today? And then let's say, you know, you kind of get a sense that you'd like a salad or you get a sense that you'd like a burger. You want to pay attention to the energy. Mm. If it's light and expansive and you get full body goosebumps and you get tingles and your body starts smiling, you follow that energy. 
you follow that energy, that orgasmic energy that is available. Usually for me, it's, it's goosebumps or like, uh, just like I get tingles all inside my body and I smile. Yeah. <laughs> my body shows me right away. Right. Um, and then if it's not that, if it's a contraction or it gets heavy or you have like a heaviness in your heart or a heaviness anywhere in your body, then that's heavy. So what is light is true for you and for your body. And what is heavy is not true for you and for your body. Oh, now I get it. Love it. Yeah. Most people don't function this way. So this is a new muscle. This is a yeah. new way of being with your body. So it may be a little bit of trial and error. You may be like, oh yeah, I really want that chocolate cake. But then you have to pay attention to the way your body feels after. And it may be that you just wanted one bite and then your body got the sensations and got what it required, what she required, what he required, and then that's that. So that also including that orgasmic energy. So when you take that bite of the salad or the hamburger or the chocolate cake or whatever it is that your body's asking for, what does that create in your body? Is it still light? Is it still expansive? Are you still getting goosebumps? Have you ever like had a piece of, of just a food that was so delicious that your entire body lit up? I have, yes. I had it on the weekend. It was, it was a chocolate thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So your body lights up. I think okay. it felt heavy afterwards though. <laughs> After. So you have to pay attention. You have to pay attention because it may be that your body just needs one or two bites. Right. When the energy changes from light and expansive and generative and it gets heavy, stop. <laughs> you know what's so <laughs> funny? Because as you're saying that, I can recall instantly when I suddenly had that shift where it was like, oh, now I'm starting to feel sick. But it's I'm not so good anymore. Eating it anyways, yeah. when I should have just, you know, paid attention to that feeling and shut it down right there. Yeah. And the same goes with your clothes. Your clothes are for your body. Look, everything in this reality is for your body. You wouldn't need a car or a house or a lover or food if you didn't have a body. So including your body and all of that. So when you go, sh like I shop like this, I touch everything first. If it feels good and then I see it and I like the color, then I pull it out and try it on. But those are like my sort of litmus test. Does it feel good on my body? Is it gonna feel good to my touch? Does it, is the color appealing, right? As I look at it, is, does it brighten me up, you know? Um, and that's also, let's play with the orgasmic energy with that. I love textures that when I walk, caress my body in a particular way. They invite sensuality. They invite the energy of sensuality, which is the way that your body wants to be touched. So if it's like a crinkly, tight, like super tight, you know, and my body's like, uh, I'm like, I'm not buying it. I'm not buying it. I don't care what you say, <laughs> what anybody else says. Um, so again, asking your body questions, you know, looking at what is going to light up your body. And in this process, you are actually going to build a better relationship with your body because it isn't about what you're telling your body to do. Now you're including your body in your life. You're including your body and think of, let's go back to the friend example. If you have a friend that's like, Hey, what do you want to do today? Where do you want to go? What would be fun for you? Doesn't that create a generative energy between you and your friend? And when you start creating that generative energy with your body, that is going to change things because it's not so much about what your body looks like or what you have to do. It is more an inclusion. That's what we call like communion. You are communing with your body. You're creating with your body. Whereas most of us get in this place of creating against our bodies, mm -hmm. not including our bodies at all. Did all of that get wrapped up in a pretty little bow? Do you have any questions? I could go on forever. <laughs> well, I, I think that we're so conditioned to look outside of ourselves for the answer. 
Yeah. Right. I always yeah. tell women that like they have to find their, their own weight loss code and that's going to have to incorporate foods that no one else's can maybe handle, or it's going to look different for each and every one of us. And this is part of it is if you can get this piece of what Patty's talking about, that will help you then to find your weight loss code. Totally. And that's so, I was just talking about this this morning because um, I've done it all. Like I've been vegan, I've been vegetarian, I've just meat, like I've done keto for, like I've done it all. And for me, it's really about tapping into what my body requires today. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Our bodies, actually, there's something like 800 million cells that shift and transform and change while you sleep. So you basically wake up in the morning with a totally new body. What if you could have a totally new relationship with your body every day? And I was doing keto for a really long time and I love it. It's all the foods that I absolutely love to eat. And now I'm starting like a boot camp thing because my body's asking for more intensity while I work out. And now my body's asking for different kinds of foods. So it's really tapping. Like if you didn't have a body, you wouldn't need food. You would not need food. You'd have a completely different life without a body. <laughs> so you've got to include your body in that include your body. And I love what you're saying about like your own weight loss code. Like what is it? And everybody is different. Yeah. Like my body, I personally, me, the being Patty Alfonso loves bread and butter. Oh my God. Oh my God. But my body carbs, not so much, but I have a friend that stayed with me for a while and she ate carbs the whole time. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I just tried it. I was like, well, let me see. I'll try some carbs. I mean, you know, and my body was like, mm -mm, no, no, mm -mm, no. Here's, here's the belly to, to show you that this is not what I like. <laughs> so that's going to be a thing too. Like yeah. your body is going to want things and enjoy things that maybe you as a being don't necessarily enjoy. Mm -hmm. But if my body is asking for it and being very clear in her messages, then I do my best to follow the energy of what she requires because it's for her. Yeah. It's for her. And, and most time, like when you're working with somebody, let's say around weight loss or food, what usually, what, what usually happens, what's the kind of progression? Like, cause I can imagine that a lot of people listening are going, if I asked my body what it wanted, it would tell me I want chocolate cake every day and, and to lie on my couch and do nothing or whatever, right? Like We're so cute. We're so cute the way we trick ourselves. I pretty much guarantee that that's not your body, that that yeah. is the being. Um, this is why when I work with people, I start with awakening the innate wisdom, awakening you to the wisdom of your body. Start listening to your body. That's where my work begins, is awakening your senses, right? That your sense of touch, your sense of smell, your sense of taste, your sight, awakening your senses because that is how your body is going to communicate with you, right? About what she or he likes and doesn't like and wants and doesn't want. So my work is more sort of on the side over here of getting to know what your body loves so that then you can create together whatever it is that you want to create together. Um, whether it's, you know, your physical appearance or it's the business that you want to create, like your body can actually contribute to all of those things, to your money flows, right? Yeah, I was <laughs> reading about that on your time. I was like, how is money tied into this too? Well, everything in this reality is for your body. Food, clothes, your house, your car, and you need money to buy all of those. My body has very expensive taste. <laughs> she likes really fine things. And so, you know, she likes luxurious things. She likes things that are soft. She likes getting massages every week. She likes getting her nails done. Like my body, all that stuff costs money. So I'm like, all right, body, if this is what you would like, what can we create? And so my body gives me information about, you know, the business and different revenue streams. And it's, it's, it's really a sort of unexplainable, magical process of consciousness that the more you have consciousness with your body, the more you can create in your entire life. Your body is your best friend, your greatest companion in this life that you have right now. Yeah, and taking it even off the spiritual shelf, 
for a second. Our bodies are extremely smart, and I think that we do not give it enough credit. So it's not only very intuitive and spiritual, but it's also these th- like our bodies will honestly tell us when, when we're sick, mm-hmm. our bodies are telling us something. Yeah, when it's right. Our emotional. body's telling yeah. us something that could be something emotional, it could be something like it could be from anything, but your body's trying to tell you something. It is, there is a brilliance and a wisdom with your body and everything that is going on with your body is your body giving you information. The thing is that we've been taught to make that information wrong, to make that information like there's a problem, right? Oh, I have neck pain. I should, I have a problem. I should go to the doctor, you know? Um, let me, I want to just a couple quick things here to, to hone this in. So um, everybody just get present with your body right now and become aware that your body is breathing. You don't actually have to do anything to breathe. Your heart is pumping, your organs are working, your blood is flowing through your body. Like all of that is brilliance and wisdom and, and just innate awesomeness that is your body all on its own right your hair is always growing your nails are always growing um that's all innate consciousness that is consciousness flowing through your body in every moment now i want to add a piece here that may be a contribution for people listening and it's just a quick little story. My, my dad passed away a few years ago and he was in hospice in our home. And when he left his body, I noticed that the body had no life left in it, right? The being left and the body that was that. And in that moment, I became aware of the gratitude that our bodies have for us as a being. Because your body gets to enjoy this world because you are occupying your body in this moment. The second you leave, that body's lifespan is done. So I wanna invite everyone to take a minute now, because this is also a very generative energy that you can start cultivating with your body the gratitude that your body has for you because you woke up this morning and you get to play in this world with your body. You get to eat delicious foods. Your body gets to enjoy those things. That orgasmic energy that I was talking about is only available because you have a body. (laughs) It is your body that bees and has that energy available. You get to get a massage because you have a body and your body's like, yay, or whatever that is that's fun for you, you know, whether it's like cycling or pole dancing or Zumba or whatever activities you get to do with your body, it's because you're with your body right now. And that energy, that gratitude, right? Instead of judging ourselves and judging our bodies, if we could step into that energy of gratitude, then judgment can't exist in that energy it just can't it's actually not possible no so what can you be grateful for and with your body today yeah i love it (laughs) it's so it's so true i i wish everybody could get this because it is a piece that has the ability to completely transform Mm -hmm. your body physically and Mm -hmm everything on the inside and the outside. I, yeah. I really believe that. Yeah. And it, you know, that, that work, was it the, the Japanese guy that did the work with water that if you like yell at the water, or whatever, then it gets all black and murky. Yes. I don't know what it is, but yes. I don't, yeah. I don't remember yeah. the guy's name, but look, your body is made of, you know, I think 93% or 97% water. So what are you yelling at your body about? Yeah. And what is that actually creating with your body? Mm -hmm. Whereas if you could invite that energy of gratitude, what would that shift and change? Be something to really teach children. I know. Oh, we have so so much work to do. We really do. (laughs) 
<laughs> like if I could just teach my child this, it would be so much easier in their in their lives if they could get this, right? Because it, like you said, it has to do with every aspect, your relationships, your money, your health, everything. If we could just be starting to ask our body. So where does the sexuality part come into it? Um, well, the sexual energy, the orgasmic mm -hmm. energy, the orgasmic energy, that's something that if you're cutting that energy off, or if you are only reserving that energy for when you are in the bedroom, then you're mm -hmm. cutting off a big piece of the energy that's available with your body, the generative energy that is actually part of how you create your body. Orgasmic energy is how you create your body. It is a generative creative energy. Um, and I know for myself, you know, when I was functioning from the head up and I wasn't really connected to that energy, my life was boring and dull. I chose terrible relationships. I, I just did stupid, stupid things with my body. And once I really started getting present with that energy and using that energy to guide me in, in everything with my body, then things really started to open up and change. And I feel like it's been my body that has guided my business. You know, I wrote my first book with my body. I kept asking my body, okay, body, what do you know about this subject? What do you want to share with the world? And then I would get these kind of uh, awarenesses, downloads of what my body knows about intimacy, about intimacy with myself. What, is your, what does my body know about sexual consciousness? right? And, and choosing all of those things with consciousness and with awareness. So, yeah. Oh, how, how, can we, how can we start doing that? Is it just this, like what you said before, of just asking yourself those questions and just trying to tune in if, it's, if it feels orgasmic or not in the moment? <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's really, you know, it's really, it is. Yes. Yeah. And, and I've given a lot of questions, actually. I know we, we actually went through a lot today. So I'd recommend whoever's watching to maybe watch it again and take some notes. Yeah. Yes. But it, it starts with asking your body questions on everything that has to do with your body. And then once you start getting a sense um, of the energy, if it's light, it's true for you. Go for that. If it's heavy, it's mm -hmm. not true for you. Go for that. And this is going to be trial and error. You may, oh, it's light for me to have ice cream every day for the next month. You'll know, your body will let you know if that is actually really what was light for your body. Yeah. So getting that <laughs> sense of clarity by following the energy of what is true and what is not true. Um, and then whatever you can do to awaken the senses of your body whether it's through, you know, the clothes that you wear, the smells that you're smelling. Like I love the smell of, of baking bread. I love the, the scent of frankincense, right? So awaken your senses. I love looking out my window and seeing the trees. I love being outside and feeling the sun on my skin, the wind on my hair, sometimes my leg hair. <laughs> You could try that too. Occasionally I mean, the hey. leg hair. Yeah. Oh, okay. You know, um, I mean, who shaves during the winter? I don't. I don't um, at all, no. <laughs> um, awakening all of your senses because it is through a sensation that your body is going to communicate with you. It is through your feelings, that gut feeling that you have. Don't ever ignore that gut feeling because that's your body communicating something. You know, if it's a heaviness in the heart or an opening in the heart, this is all information that... So ask questions, yeah. follow the energy, awaken your body's senses. And, and get out of your head. Yeah. I think that's where mine kind of, when I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, because I really try to be intuitive with stuff, but I get in my head and I think, well, is that my intuition or is that my, what I'm thinking in my head? <laughs> and this is a lot of what the pole dancing helped me with because mm -hmm. I was in my head because I didn't want to be in my body, yes. present with my body. So what movement is it that will get you out of your head and present with your body? You know, for me, it's pole dancing. Like it, it does all of it, actually. It awakens my senses. It turns me on. You know, I get to do um, muscle exertion. I get to be present with my whole body. But what is it for you? Mm -hmm. What would be fun for your body? Because it's not about what I'm doing. It's about what your body loves. 
Yeah. And so your book that you have, I know that you have a free, like a free first chapter, is it that people can read? Is the book about this? Yes. Okay. And it has all of the tools (laughs) that I I used um, around all of this. And I think there's also like a secret bonus site that you can log into once you get the book that gives you even more tools and and more, more free stuff. So yeah. Okay. And what's the book called? I'm going to put the show in the show links, but still. The book is Your Body as the Creation of Consciousness, and you can download the free chapter at yourbodyisconsciousness.com. Great. And I like your dot com. It's not dot com, actually. It's pattyalfonso.sexy. I love it. (laughs) Everybody kept telling me, you're so sexy. And I was like, well, I might as well use it to my advantage. (laughs) I didn't know there could be a dot sexy. So I interviewed a guy recently who was um, all about self-love and he got uh, Paul Fishman dot love. Wow. And it's yeah. like, you can choose that. And I was like, that's perfect. <laughs> it's so cool. Hey, there's so many dots. I didn't know. Yeah. I think you just have to like go into whatever your, your thing is and just see what you can find. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're all getting very, I think dot coms are running out or something. So everyone's getting bad. <laughs> Well, that's Patty Alfonso Jot Sexy for those of you that want more from Patty. You've got lots of great stuff on your website. You've got a number of different courses. You've got one on the pole dancing for yes. consciousness. Yes. Um, one's on self love. So there's a few different things there to choose from. So um, if you're liking what Patty's putting down, go check it out. Come play Patty with me in the next body. Yes. <laughs> Well, I know I'm going to take so much of what you said today. Like I'm already going through all the things in my head that I'm going to start to, because it's like muscle testing to me, what you're talking about a lot, like very similar where you're just kind of, you're using, in in this case, you're using your body's cues of how it feels Mm -hmm. to know whether or not that's the right choice. So that's kind of how I'm going to take it. Yeah. And that is what muscle testing is as well. Is your body telling you? Is your body telling you what works, what's going to be light and true for you? So I don't, I've never used muscle testing because I do a lot of other different things, but thank you for that, throwing that in. Uh, Absolutely. Muscle testing is your body telling you. You're using your body's resistance, is it, to to find out? There's different ways that you can do pendulums. You can do like tap your arm to see if it goes weak. You can do this, the break the finger thing. Yeah, I've tried that before. But I get really, to, I get too in my head to do them. Like I, I, I need really, someone else like, to do it. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah totally. Yeah, there's one where you stand and it's like if you if you start falling forward when you ask, it's a yes. If you start falling back, it's a no. And I'm just like I'm all over the place. Going, Damn, what? Yes, no. You know. So I I I prefer your method. <laughs> And I'm going to try it with different things and see if that's, yeah, what my body says. Cause I think that's, that's dead on. You're right. All right. Well, thank you so much, Patty. This has been very enlightening. It was, it was exactly what it should be. <laughs> Since we didn't know where, where it was going to go. It's exactly what it should be and what people needed to hear. So thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Bye everyone watching now and in the future. Thank you for watching.